What's up everybody and thank you for joining me for another video. My name is Wack4863, but you can call me Wack. I am very excited to bring you this video. As you may know, I've been covering Update 3.0 or the Age of Sorcery for the last few weeks now as we've been getting tidbits of information about this update to Conan Exiles. Now, recently, a fellow content creator, Jordy Kai, was able to stream Update 3.0 directly from TwitchCon in Amsterdam. And I previously did a video showing you guys just a little bit of that live stream, and I wanted to bring you more. So today I am actually joined by Jordy in this video and we're going to talk a little bit about her experience at TwitchCon and her experience with Update 3.0. Jordy, how you doing? Thank you so much for having me. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So good. tell me, first of all, tell me about your streaming. You are on Twitch and what do you stream? Yes, so I am on uh, Twitch streaming Conan roleplay mainly. Um, that is kind of my favorite genre is roleplay. I started on uh, GTA roleplay for about, I'd say a year or two years, and then slowly went into Conan because I was introduced by one of my friends and I just fell in love with it. Um, I really, really enjoy the roleplay aspect of Conan. It feels like it's almost a hybrid between D&D &D and also then Conan the game. So yeah, I just really love it. That sounds amazing. And I was actually uh, lucky enough to have some time to spend in your live stream the other night. And man, was I blown away. Really good stuff, guys. If you're into Conan at all, if you're into D&D &D at all, if you're into roleplay at all, you definitely should check out Jordy's channel. And that link will be in the description of this video. So give me a little bit of background about yourself. What are you into? What do you like to do outside of Conan? What would you like to tell us about yourself? All right, so I am a huge uh, roleplay fan. I started on GTA roleplay um, and that's how I got into Conan roleplay. I'm a big uh, RPG fan, any form of uh, roleplaying games. I enjoy D&D, &D, massive D&D &D fan, uh, makeup, acting, all of that good stuff. So I started streaming about five years ago and I got into role playing through the GTA community. And then from there found Conan and I've just always loved role playing games. And it's really, really interesting to be able to create your own character and then create your own story. And then the, like you can world build and kind of go from there. So that's kind of where I got into everything. That's very cool. So what's interesting is you said that Conan as a role playing game. And if you look at Conan, it really isn't a role playing game. What I love about Conan is that people can play it however they want. It's such an open game that it includes things like role play. It includes things like almost a hack and slash game and it is a survival game. So I really feel like they have this really cool niche with Conan that can really encapsulate most people's play style. Definitely, I completely agree. And the added sense of like mods as well really just add a whole new world to the game and it just has grown and developed into something so wonderful and a great creative outlet for a lot of different people who enjoy D&D &D and story building. So it's another kind of space where people can tell stories and just get involved in storytelling. And even if people are nervous, I definitely recommend for people to just chill in a role play stream and kind of get a feel for it because if you do like D&D, &D, it's just a great other outlet to be creative. That's awesome. So, you were recently able to attend TwitchCon in Amsterdam. Tell me, how was that? So, it is the first time that I've ever been to an EU TwitchCon and it was absolutely amazing. I really loved it. It was an incredible experience meeting new people, brands and businesses. 
and it honestly is a fantastic place to network and I highly recommend that anybody who streams or you know is into that kind of thing uh, video creation on YouTube definitely check it out it's worth it for being able to meet like-minded people and also being able to make new friends and I think that's the most important part you know and the most important takeaway from it too that's awesome so as part of your time at TwitchCon, you got your hands on the elusive Update 3.0, the Age of Sorcery, what we're all waiting and dying to play. How was it? It was absolutely incredible, first of all, and I'm so grateful to Funcom for giving me the opportunity. Uh, being able to play it and seeing everything firsthand is definitely the most incredible experience. I know when you see a trailer, you only see a portion of what there is to offer, but actually feeling how easy and well optimized everything is, it just feels so much more fulfilling. Like with all games, you know, until you've played it firsthand and it, I just enjoyed every moment of it. Being able to stream the game for my community and people all around the globe felt so fulfilling. I'm so proud to have been a part of that experience. I'm just so happy we were able to showcase more of what 3.0 has to offer. And Andy being there, answering the questions obviously was a huge plus and he really was able to delve into questions that the community had and people in chat. So that was really, really nice as well. So massive thank you to Andy for, for giving me the opportunity and being there as well. Yeah, I gotta tell you, I was watching that live stream and when he did the reveal, the price reveal for the battle pass, I was blown away. I was like, no way did he just do the price reveal. So very cool that you were actually able to stream that. Uh, it's gotta be something that sticks out in your memory for sure. Oh, 110%. It's gonna be an experience that will stay with me for my whole content creation career. Like genuinely, it was incredible. So very proud. <laughs> That's fantastic. So tell me this, was there anything about playing update 3.0 that sticks out in your mind that you want to share with everybody listening? Absolutely. So first of all, I want to say the update just felt so good. It just is so well optimized. It's less finicky and it's just straight to the point. There has definitely been a lot more that has gone into the making of this update and it really feels like they've been listening to their fans. I know a lot of people have been scared about the battle pass and that's something that has been putting people off I think to a degree but seeing the amount of content it will bring is very exciting. We definitely needed new placeables, mounts, armor, weapons and items and can I just say as well the level of detail when you're face to face seeing all of the you know placeables and armor face to face is just so so good. Everything is just beautiful. They did a fantastic job and it's really nice to know that Funcom has been listening. With the battle pass, there's so much to come, so I'm ready to spend the money and support them. Like, I just can't wait. I'm just ready for it. That's awesome. And I'm picking up on some things that you're saying that sounds like there's more to this update than meets the eye, more that's been announced. And I won't press you on that because I don't think it would be fair for me to ask you to divulge information that Funcom hasn't already. But is it safe to say that there is more coming with Update 3.0 than what we've already been told? Oh yeah, absolutely. There is a lot to come and I'm just so excited for everyone to get their hands on it and just we're all experiencing this together. So it is really, really exciting. So one of the things that I noticed from the live stream is you had started in the creative mode and kind of building and putting things together but it seemed like you were kind of interrupted and didn't really give that a full look during the live stream. Can you give us some insight into the creative mode and the building system in and of itself? Of course, so one thing that I will say is creative mode is the biggest blessing ever. If you just love building and you could sit there for hours at a time, you are going to absolutely love creative mode. It's just so easy to get into. It's exactly like the admin panel. You just click into it and you are able to access it. And then you have unlimited building materials. So you can just sit there and craft whatever you'd like. So during the time that we were looking at creative mode, Andy had said that Funcom were actually looking into the fact that they do not have a search bar 
that is essentially in the creative mode when you're looking for certain items. So say for example, you're looking for a storm glass window. You actually have to scroll through storm glass items to eventually find the item you're looking for. So it is a little bit tedious and Funcom said that they are looking into that as potentially something that they might add in the future. But uh, I just really, really enjoy it. It's so easy. It's literally at a click of a button, you can change things. And now, especially with the hammer as well, everything is just so much more accessible. And I think Conan to a degree felt a little bit more tedious than it was meant to when we've come so far now that everything is just so seamless so it really really i'm just so excited for people to try it because it really does give the game something a little bit more just alleviates some extra stress and it makes it more enjoyable sure a little bit more streamlined than it would be now definitely 110 percent so one thing that I've seen come up about the building system and people are a little bit confused about it is the difference between creative mode and then the survival mode building when you don't have access to creative mode. Can you expand a little bit on that? Yeah, absolutely. So the difference between creative mode and then the survival mode, just the building system as it is, is essentially in the regular building mode you still have your hood you are not able to fly and you actually need the materials to build whatever you're looking to craft so say for example you are looking to craft sandstone you have to have the items then in your inventory to be able to craft them whereas in creative mode you don't have your hood you can fly and you have unlimited resources. So you can literally scroll for what you're looking for and then place them down. So that's the only difference between both of those. Yeah, so the building system sounds like it's gonna be really good and I can't wait to get my hands on it. You talked about being on a heavily modded server for your role play. What do you think is gonna happen? How do you think mods are gonna be able to handle the incoming changes with Age of Sorcery? That's a very good question. Now, of course, I am not my I'm not a mod myself, but I do know one of the modders who is called Multiguns, and he works with the Pythagoras mod. And during one of the streams, he was saying that he's not worried in the slightest about the update. And usually the community would be a little bit more worried about how it would affect the mods. But he just said that there's nothing to worry about and everything will be well optimized. It might take a little bit of time, but it is nothing to worry about. So all mods shouldn't be too badly affected. Yeah, very cool. And I know that Funcom has been working hard and talking about making sure that the mod creators have that dev kit early enough to start making changes to their mods with this update. So hopefully we see a seamless transition with that. All right, everybody, we are going to wrap it up here, but I want to know in the comments section, what are you most excited about for coming up in update 3.0? Again, I'd like to thank you, Jordy, for being on the channel, coming and talking with us about your experience with Update 3.0. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. Is there anything you'd like to say before we wrap it up? I just want to say a massive thank you to you, WAC, for having me uh, here on the channel. It really, really means a lot, especially as a fan of your work for all this time. So thank you very, very much. Uh, for anybody who would like to check out my stream, uh, I am on Twitch under the name Jordy Kai. Feel free to pop on by where we stream a lot of role play content. We just have a really, really good, cool community over there. So feel free to join the Kai community and I hope to see you really soon. I'd like to thank all my YouTube members for your continued support. Y'all are absolute legends. If you'd like to become a legend, there's a button that says join on this page. Click that for details. There's two videos on the screen. Click one of those to watch next and I'll meet you over there.